Hi everyone, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. This is part two of how to create a junk journal from an old book. This is the slow crafting method. I want to uh, go over with you all the little tips and tricks I can think of to make this an easy process. This is going to be a hidden spine, so we're not going to destroy the spine in this book. We're going to keep it intact because I really like the way the spine looks. It says heart throbs on it, volume one, and it has the um, uh, World Syndicate something at the bottom but I like the old um, what aged look of it and I want to preserve that uh, so I want to show you uh, some just some easy ways that you can go ahead and do that it's uh, not difficult but let's walk through the process so last time we made this lovely um, journal cover and the next part is going to be uh, making our signatures and uh, so let's do that so let's just put this aside right now um, for the next thing we want to talk about is selecting our papers and you can use any kinds of papers that you like they can be just plain copy white uh, copy uh, papers uh, plain white papers you can use um, college rule old uh, book pages uh, magazine pages um, there's so many different things you can pull from resume paper uh, hand dyed papers uh, papers from accounting books, old journals, things like that. This is what I selected for this book. And in this particular book, I'm going to do four signatures. Okay, and now I know you want to know how wide is the spine. Okay, let's go figure this out. I may have already measured this in the first one. can't remember. Um, about, a, about an inch and a half. Okay. And for me, um, four inches... Um, I'm sorry, four signatures for an inch and a half spine is fine because I tend to heavily decorate. But if you... Um, want to make it more of a writing book uh, where uh, it's not heavily decorated you could put up to five or more signatures in um, and you'll get a feel for it it all depends on the uh, thickness of the papers that you are using and um, how much decorating you're going to be doing on those pages so I would say on average um, like maybe an inch spine I would probably do two to three signatures inch and a half uh, maybe three to five depending on the book's purpose and then you can go on from there. I think the biggest I've ever done is um, three or three and a half inch spine uh, which may have had seven signatures in it. Not sure um, but it was it was a lot uh, but you'll get a feel for it and it, honestly the best way to do it is just make a few and uh, just see if it feels full enough. How many pages per signature? I generally do tw 10 to 12 as a rule of thumb if you take into account all different uh, thicknesses of paper and I do use uh, uh, many papers of different thicknesses. Again, not mandatory, it's just by choice, but the thinner your paper, um, the skinnier your signature, so you could have more signatures if you wanted. Um, and remember too, when you make your signatures, <clears throat> the inside of the signature let me point right the papers that are on the inside get moved that way as you fold because even though they're all the same uh, size when you fold them in half the guys in the center can't get to the guys at the edge so they end up sticking out a bit so I'm going to show you like some things to consider as you're cutting your papers and there's a lot of different ways to uh, prepare your papers um, so I want to show you what I chose for this particular book. And I basically repeated the same concept through the four signatures. Um, the average size of these pages is eight and a half by 11. Some are bigger, or no, none are bigger, but some are smaller. It was just the way they, um, the selection came out. My actual journal is officially eight inches by five inches. Okay, so just kind of knowing that going in, okay. Uh, so what in the middle, I'm gonna have a beautiful um, uh, bird illustrative picture that comes from this gorgeous bird guide. It has this wonderful velvety feel. It's a very a beautiful old book. It has um, information on one side, beautiful pictures on the other. And these are, these are fun, like if you come across a great book with great pictures, awesome thing to put in your junk journals. Um, okay, so next I used a college rule paper. This was dyed, coffee dyed, and uh, they, it released the pinkishness of the coffee, of the coffee, of the lines, not the pinkishness. Here's the pinkishness from that line bleeding. And then all this blue, I believe, is from, uh, number one, it's from the lines dissolving. As you can see, the lines dissolved. And number two, I may have dyed this in red cabbage water um, 
That releases a very beautiful blue dye. It does have the aroma of cabbage. So there you go. You got to be okay with that. Um, if you let those papers dry long enough, and I do mean months, <laughs> Uh, eventually the scent will fade. Um, sometimes you can store them outside or in a garage or something like that and it'll eventually waft away. And also if you don't use a thousand of the papers all in one journal but you only use one occasionally here and there, they're almost scent free. So I would say, okay, I'm going to do the smell test. I don't smell anything right now. So um, either I didn't use the blue... <laughs> <laughs> the, the red cabbage, or um, it's just gone now. So anyway, if any, just want to say that, put that out there for the people who don't like the cabbage smell. Um, okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, it is chilly here in Florida, so I have got a sweater on, and I've got my little heater going, which I turned down, so hopefully it won't make too much noise while we are uh, doing this. So um, this, was, this is going to be the central one. Now you have choices with your central uh, picture, you don't have to have a central one. This is optional. Um, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, you can orient it right like so it looks like a regular book page or you can completely put them sideways and that is totally fine too. All, often both things are done in the world of junk journals. Okay, second page is the uh, college rule. Third page is an old book page from a book about Rome. It's a smaller one, okay? Now you can perfectly center it in your book or you can tap all your papers down to one corner and just have the uh, page not be centered. And that's okay too, they don't have to be centered. Um, and remember too, when you're going through your book, these two won't show at the same time. This will be buried in the back half, this will be in the front half. So um, just kind of know that as well. Okay, and... This is a beautiful piece of uh, resume paper. I don't know if you can see the, see if I can take the zoomy, zoomy, zoom, zoom close. It seems so dark in this picture. Is it dark? But yeah, you can see it has texture. Kind of fun, right? Okay, zooming back up. And we have a piece of coffee dyed paper. It has a good crunch. It has a crunchy, good texture feel. A piece of um, green dyed paper with a specialty ink. You can also use food color, which makes an awesome dye. Another beautiful book page of some sort. This is a book uh, from a Hans Christian Andersen book, uh, The Angel. Hmm, very nice. And uh, uh, this is another beautiful resume paper, a, um, a parchment style paper, an avocado dyed paper. Um, and this, I, I just enjoy dyeing papers uh, for my books, but you don't necessarily have to do that. And there's a lot of um, pre-printed pages you can get if you, if you like to use those instead, that's fine. You can use plain paper as well. Uh, here's uh, just a pretty page and here's a stencil, stenciled white copy paper page. Those are fun to use. You can make those your own and just do a whole batch in a one session and they make beautiful uh, journal pages for your book, signature pages. So there you go. And then there, this I used a, um, a piece of cardstock which is on the outside and I'm going to use it. Uh, it's a little bit thicker. It's 110 uh, pound weight cardstock and um, I'm going to use that to wrap my signatures. Um, you don't have to have a thicker paper on the outside of your signatures. It's just another option out there for the great uh, folks in the junk journal world. You can do whatever you like in that department and say, okay. Okay, I don't even know if I put those together right. Probably not. Okay, well, we'll just go with it this way. All right. So I'm going to put you here. Now there's a million and one ways to get your pages to fit your book. And I'll show you a couple here. One of them is you take this clump and you fold it in half. Now you know this is eight and a half or eight by five, right? Uh, or five by eight, okay? So you know this has to be just a smidge smaller. If, so if you, if you take this clump and you fold it in half, okay? And you squeeze it down here. We can do this, I'll just, I'll just do it with you. I've got a few I can show you here. Um, let me just put this one aside because he's a little looser. And I have another little loosey goosey. I'm going to make sure that he is down into this left corner. And I get him there by doing this. Get everybody down into the left corner. I'm fine with that. If you want to reposition them so that they're in the middle, feel free to go ahead and do that. Fold in half. And this is, uh, and you could tap, 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 make sure they're all even at the bottom. Very, very good idea to do that. Check your bottoms. <laughs> Check your bottoms, everybody. Check your bottoms. Okay. And then we will grab our handy dandy bone folder. Um, you can just use your hands to do this as well or edge of a ruler or scissors. But this gives you a nice crisp edge. Okay. 
Now what you'll notice is that some of the little pages are sticking out here. That's because of that translation to the right. No big deal. Um, that's an aesthetic unto itself. You can uh, leave that as is or you can um, shave them down, but we'll go over that in a sec. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so the first thing you can say to yourself is, okay, well, uh, five by eight, that means I need to have it just a little bit shorter than five by eight. So four and seven eighths by eight and, or seven and seven eighths. You could do something like that, okay? Now, because we're gonna do a hidden spine, um, you may wanna consider we're going to be adding a piece into here, which is gonna take up some bulk, which is going to, let me use a smaller piece, it's easier to show you. Okay, that's going to be the, what we're going to attach our, our signatures to, this extra piece of cardboard. And it's going to translate your papers ever so slightly to the right. Don't get too worried about it because a lot of uh, spines do bow a little bit. So it might actually end up um, nestling backwards and pulling your papers this way. You kind of got to get a feel for the spine. Is it, a, is it a soft, bendy spine that's going to pull back? Or is it a really stiff spine that is going to push your stuff forward because you're adding extra bulk in here? It's not much of a difference, but it's always good to cut off less versus more in the beginning because you can always cut off more. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to really get at. Okay, now this guy, I'm just going to fold him in half. I like the way he looks. I think he's very handsome, and I'm inviting him into the center of my journal where he shall live forevermore, at least until somebody else takes him out. <laughs> All right, there you go. And uh, let's grab some, it's always handy to have some paper clips around. And I'm just gonna put a bunch here so we have them to work with. I bought these, uh, I guess, uh, these size paper clips are I officially tell you they're about one and three quarter. No, these are one and seven eighths. And then these big ones, I think are four inches. Let me look. Yeah, these are these are big four inches. They're really handy. You can use regular size paper clips. That's totally fine. Okay. Um, so now we, we need to cut this baby down. Now there's a couple ways you can cut this baby down. If we're going to do one signature at a time, which is totally fine, um, I would recommend... Let's, you want to do what I call the whack-a-mole first, which is I take a ruler and I whack it down so it's all snuggled in there, really nice and tidy. And then I clamp it. Okay, so now I can come along with, uh, yes, a measuring device. I know, sometimes it happens. And uh, let's, let's see where the eight inch mark is. It's good to have a, a little pencil or something handy there with you. Um, so officially, can you see this? No. Okay. Eight inches is to here. So if I want to go a little bit shorter, I would go to here. Okay. And um, then I want to also take a little bit off the five inch length. Now remember with your funky little ruler, there's always a little dead space at the beginning. So make sure you accommodate for that. So either put it on the ori original official starting line of the five inches at the back of your spine. Let's bring in closer. Okay. And then five was going to go here. So I want a little shorter than that. So I'm going to go to here. Okay. Now, if I've got my, oh, let me zap back out again. If I've got my, my uh, craft mat here. I think it's going to be helpful for me to also make a mark on this end because I have a feeling I'm going to end up cutting that off. So down the eight, let's go to the seven and seven eighths. Okay. Let me just make sure that's right. Did I account for my little, my little extra piece there? No, no. Oh, it's not bad, but let me go a little bit more there. Okay. I'm on the north end of that. That's where I want to go. So, and there's a million and one ways you can cut this. You can take this apart and um, put this on your guillotine and cut each, each, like the chunk at once. You can take each individual page and cut it at once. You can also take your tearing ruler for each individual page and tear it so you don't have to cut. But my, my personal favorite way to handle this is uh, with a craft knife and squashing it down really good. And then using my craft mat to square it up. All right, so once I have it square, then 
I can go ahead and snip that little bottom off and put it on the north end of that bottom dot. And you can see if you're at the same space, like if there's that much distance here, do I have that much distance there from the line? Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. I don't know how sharp this is. Hopefully it's sharp. Oh yeah, not too bad. It usually takes about, with a sharp one, two or three for a regular signature to get through it. There, we're almost through. There we go. All right. Retracting. <laughs> okay, now come this way. And uh, now we're just going to do the same thing and go down this way. Because we have the paper folded in half, this is key. Um, this is going to give the edge of your signature, your collection of papers, this little mini booklet that goes into your, um, into your junk journal, a flush edge. This is going to be flush. So you're not going to have that, see that? You're not going to have that translation pooch like this, because when you fold the papers in half and then you cut them, you get rid of the, the little extra peaky outies here that happen. So, okay, flush. Okay, so that's what happens when you fold it in half. All right, where are we? Okay, let's try this again. And it's totally okay to measure the bottom too. Let's say you don't have a grid, but you need to know where to go to. Um, let's go ahead and put a pencil dot there. We're butting that up. We're taking into account that little bit. And then we want to use the same measurement, which I believe was four and three quarter, or four and, what? No, hang on. Four and seven eighths. Yeah, make sure I'm in the right spot. I think I am. Okay, if, if all the planets are aligned and everything is with you, uh, you're ready to go ahead and cut. Now, when you put your uh, ruler down, you want to be just to the, um, you want to be at the same point. Like if you're just to the left of your dot, be just to the left of your dot on the bottom one too. And that'll give you a straighter cut. Okay, here we go. And always <laughs> double check. What do they say? Uh, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. That, that is true. Um, but you do a few of these and you'll be like, oh yeah, okay, now I get it. It's no big deal. Uh, it's a little intimidating in the beginning, but once you get rolling with it, you're fine. You're totally fine. Yeah, let's see if I did this right. Why doesn't that look like this one at all? No. No, I must have cut them a different width, different length. Maybe I did them both five. That's what I did. Okay. So uh, what I probably did was I originally cut this one eight by five exactly. I'll bet you I did. Yeah. Okie dokie. So this is something you want to keep in mind that you actually use the same measurements if you're going to cut all your signatures uh, the same. So what I'm going to do is, are you a little taller? You are a little taller. So I have to trim this guy up a little bit. That means a little, I'm going to remove about a quarter of an inch along the top so that he will match that guy. I'm just eyeballing it at this point. Looks like a quarter of an inch to me. It'll be pretty darn close. Now here, here you get a little bit of the, you don't have to be 100% exact. If you know you need to take a little smidge off, you take a little smidge off. And it's always easier um, to cut it a little big and come back and smidge off a little more if need be. Okay. But you'll find that, uh, you'll find, um, what works best for you and your situation with the tools you have and also uh, what particular way you enjoy doing it. That's probably 99% of it. You want to keep it fun for yourself when you're creating your, your books from um, beautiful papers. Okay, so here we go. We have these two now. Um, let me see. Yeah, you're pretty good. Pretty close to the same height. Are we good? No. Looks like I didn't cut that one straight. Okay. Oh, oh no, yeah, we actually, we are okay. Okay, there we are good. And then the widths. Hmm. Okay, somebody didn't get cut straight. Who didn't get cut straight? It happens. Uh, so what can I do? I can uh, cut this little guy in the back a little bit more. Yep, a little smidgeroo more. And uh, that'll bring it all into alignment. So the easiest thing to do is to keep double checking with your previously made signatures. Now you want to make sure that you don't go too short or else you're going to end up with shorty signatures. They're not wide enough and that, that can happen sometimes. Okay, now we are good to go. 
Okay, these line up at the top and they line up at the side. Okay, so we are good. Um, all right, so let's look at another way to do this because we've got two more signatures to deal with. But I just wanted to show you another alternative. Okay, here's another signature. I've got one more signature, that's it. Oh, we need to trim this guy too. This guy I just folded in half and I used one of these as a template. You can do that. Uh, so this is the one that I just folded in half. Nothing fancy was done to him. He's just regular old signature, uh, waiting to see what happens with him in his life. And then there's this guy who came along and he said, hey, I am a template. And what you can do is you can take a, pe a pencil and once you have one done, you can make um, a little template line like that. And remember to just, when you trim, you cut just inside the line uh, because that is where your actual signature lives. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. Uh, you don't have to measure too much here. It should be, most of the measuring is already done. So really technically you only need to measure the first one. And then after that, all the others should follow suit. In theory, it should work that way. It may not in actuality, because that's the way it goes when you're measuring. <laughs> if you measure the way I do, um, it's never an exact science. It should be. It really should be. My world never works out that way. So uh, I, I tend to uh, check these things and then recheck and double check. I haven't done a hidden spine in a long time. Um, okay, let's see. Did we get through? All right, we are through everybody. So this is signature number three. And we will just, we measured up him against him. Oh, look at that. He's looking pretty good. Okay, he's about the same height. And he's nice and flushies. Okay, so that is awesome. We've got three out of four. Then we've got this guy. Okay, so the other way to do it is you can actually cut all of your signatures at once. And um, what you can do is let's just, uh, we're not going to fold it. That's right. Let's just make sure we have all our papers aligned where we want them to be. And I don't know where that is for you, but if you want everything in the dead center, go ahead and arrange that now. If you want some stuff slid down to the left side or the right side, go ahead and arrange that now before you do your cutting and your trimming. Okay. So this is my middle guy. Just fold him up and I'll put you aside for a second, middle guy, because you're not really going to get trimmed. I'm going to put a paper clip on you. Now, um, my eight and a half, or I'm sorry, my uh, five by eight, let me get the book. My five by eight book um, is really 10 by eight if I just cut it without folding it. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and try that. All right. Uh, shoo, shoo, shoo. Do, no, I'm, can you see? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm accounting for that little bit at the beginning of the ruler. And I'm grabbing my, where is it, pencil? 10 by 8. Okay, now I want to be a little bit in, so I'm not going to go to the full, wait, no, this is this 10 side. So this is the 10, and I'm going to come in maybe, um, let's take it into the nine and, uh, I would probably want to go nine and three quarters, but I'm going to go nine and seven eighths just to be sure. And then, um, we are going to, this is going to be the eight, which is going to remain constant. So we will measure down, allowing for the little top piece, eight, but then we will only want to be seven and seven eighths is where the actual mark will go. Okay. So now. If I cut this off, I'll lose that dot. That's another thing you want to be careful of. When you measure and you put your dots, it's probably a good idea to put the dots on both sides. Otherwise, uh, it'll just disappear. Yeah, it'll be gone. <laughs> yeah, you'll cut it off. You'll be like, whoa, where'd my measurement go? Okay, which is another reason why it's not. I'm not a big fan of this part. But um, Okay, so here we go over here. And then we're just going to put that dot, I guess, here. That's where it's going to be. And then you are going to be... Uh, we're going to come down all the way down to seven and seven eighths. Am I in shot? Did I disappear? No, I'm in shot. Okay. 
All right, so now I'm cutting through fewer papers, which makes it easier. So if you don't feel safe or stable cutting through papers that are um, uh, all folded in that, because it can get a little thick sometimes, um, you can do it like this. Now the thing with this is you could technically take all four signatures, lay them all down at the same time, piled on top of one another. You can keep them paper clipped apart so you can uh, know where they separate from each other. You can, with this craft knife, just go through and pretend I have four signatures here all waiting to be uh, cut. You can cut them all at the same time. So you just keep removing whatever came off. And you're going to go through this like if there were four signatures, you just keep going. You go very slow. You just keep moving your um, craft knife and you will be through that. I'm going to move this to the, whoops, okay, through the paper. Okay. To the top. I'm going to put this here. This is my top. This is my side. I'm turning it because I want to make a cut along the bottom and make this the right width of book. Now I've removed my little dot, but I know this has to be down the side is going to be seven and seven eighths. So let's find that. Um, there it is. Okay. And somehow I, I lost the dot. Yep, apparently it's gone. I don't know where it went. All right, seven and seven eighths is going to be here. Okay. So you may cut off your dots by accident, but don't worry if, if it happens. You can just uh, remeasure and put more dots down. You'll need, need dots on the very top pages so that you can see where to cut. Now, keep cutting, cutting, removing these. This is not hard. It's not scary to work with this as long as you always keep your eye on the craft knife. Always watch the blade. Um, never cut towards you like that. Like if anything, have your blade angled just a little bit away from you. So if it ever slipped, it's going to slip the other way. That's, that's how you save yourself. Okay, so now I have these nice pages. If I had four signatures thick, they would be all stacked on top of each other. Very fat and very uh, friendly. And they would all be the same size. Now, here's the thing. When we fold it in half, we are going to get the pooch out the side because the inner ones are going to push the outer ones that way. So we're going to get that. So if, if you do this method, do it for all of the signatures. That's what I'm trying to say, because you're going to find that um, you're going to need to come and finish trim them if you want to, that smooth edge. Or you can just leave them like that, which is a, it's, a, it's an aesthetic to itself. So you don't need to, you don't have to come along and trim those off. You can. Um, it's just a, a visual choice. Okay, I'm going to put this middle guy in here now. So he lives where he's, look at, he's a little tall. Yeah, look at that. He's a little tall. Okay, I wonder if this went the right size. Yep, they look like they're the right size. But you sure seem taller than everybody else present. Well, we're just going to have to, this is what we do with you. We'll just tear off the bottom. Yep, here we go. And we're in. <laughs> now he fits. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just trim off his edge. Okay. Tap, 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 and we're approaching the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this section up. So this will be the official um, selecting our signature papers and uh, getting our signatures prepared. Yes, okay, so we have the little uh, area of uh, some guys migrating out. All you do is you hold this down again, decide where you wanna uh, snip it off. Maybe you wanna measure and make sure that you have four and three quarters where that is because that's how wide the uh, my other ones are so I would like them to match okay there and then four and three quarters remember that mindful little bit on the ruler okay so five is here four and three quarters is here okay so make sure you don't cut too deep into your uh, signature because you'll you'll snip off a part that you wanted to keep okay that looks like a good alignment oh, let me, uh, there we go okay and now I'm just going to come along. I'm going to zoom it in a little so you can actually see how these papers are. See, it's just like the little Lucy papers. That's it that I'm trimming off. I'm not going into the actual signature cover, um, the cover one on the outside, because the four and seven eighths is beyond the edge of that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Retracting. 
Ta-da! There we have number four. Let's hope it, it matches. There we go. Okay, let's see how we did. Sometimes we do well. Not bad, huh? Not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, let's see here. Oh, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so we've got four signatures that are now ready to be inserted into our junk journal, and we'll go ahead and do those next time. But let me show you the girth of what we have. So we're going to say to ourselves, is that enough? And I think that's a nice amount to be in this book. If you wanted one of those books that lays flat, you know, that's, I remember I have um, paper clips here too, so that's bunching it up a bit. But that's a nice amount of a uh, book page to be inside a journal with um, uh, a one and a half inch spine and four signatures. So that's what it looks like. It's kind of cool. And it's starting to look like a book already, which is extra cool. We are not far away from completing this book as far as the basic structure. So hang on to your hats, folks. There's a lot of excitement coming your way. <laughs> and let me see if uh, Little Sunshine has anything to add to this. Sunny, are you okay? Yes, Mom, I'm fine. Oh, I didn't know I was coming for a pup date. All right, let, let me try. Okay, I'm coming in. Okay. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm a little heartthrob. I'm still asleep, apparently. I was sleeping over there, and there were, um, let's see, what can I tell you today? I had a snack. I had a snack of, what did you have today? I had a milk bone, and I think Papa shared some of his breakfast. Um, I'm not admitting to anything, because Mama wasn't there to see it. And Mama gave me, what else did you give me, Mom? A little taste of your cereal? Yeah, I said it was very good. But now I'm back on the healthy food, and that's all it'll be for the rest of the day is healthy food. Oh, oh well, somebody's got to eat it. Thank you very much, Sunshine. We truly appreciate that, and we, we feel for you. We've all been there when it's time to eat the healthy food again. <laughs> I get you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little segment of putting together this junk journal. And um, welcome to everybody who is here. And for those of you who have not heard this, um, my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they are all topics on um, junk journals, uh, paper crafting, life of a crafter, answering your crafty questions. And also I put out video podcasts on Spotify and Instagram. Um, I salt and pepper those throughout the week. You may see some of those. They look like YouTube videos, because that's what they are. They are from my archives. And I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Hey, if you're not getting that, be sure you sign up for that because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month. It's on one page and it comes in different sizes and you can print it out at home and cut it out and use it in your artwork any way you like. And um, it is, uh, they're really beautiful. I also have uh, junk journal tips, a note from the bookmaker, which explains um, uh, what a junk journal is and how to use it and you can change the font or the wording and make it yours. These are all included in my uh, monthly email newsletter. You're going to find links for these down near the bottom and also a checklist of junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for updates from me at the paper outpost and also um, uh, sneak peeks at my digi kits that are coming up for that month. So there you go. Um, let's see if you um, uh, if you like uh, uh, vintage digi kits. I have about 144 sets now, I believe, on my Etsy site. You can uh, roam through. They come in different themes like birds and Victorian and vintage and uh, sewing and baking and, and uh, calligraphy and celestial and all sorts of fun things. Postcards, recipe cards, old ledger, old handwritten um, letters, old uh, handwritten music was actually my dad's music was kind of cool. He, he did that when he was young. And also um, other fun things. And um, even if you don't have a printer at home, I offer a print and mail service. All I need is 10 names of digi kits from my, my uh, Etsy store. And then for you to purchase the print and mail option, send me the list of the ones that you want, either via directly to my email address, which is pam at thepaperoutpost.com, or you can also message me the link in Etsy message or Etsy contact. Uh, and all roads will lead to me printing those out and mailing them to you. I do those in batches of 10, just so you know. So pick out 10 digi kits and uh, off they will be on their way to you. And they are, uh, shipping is included with a priority mail service. So you'll get it relatively quickly. And what else do we do? I also sell fundals, which are collections of old papers, um, unique uh, ledger pages, uh, old handwritten um, 
letters, receipts, checks, uh, postcards, um, all sorts of fun stuff that um, there's also interesting book pages and hand dyed papers in there things that and they come in hundred piece packs and I ship those out and mail those to you if you want a great place to get started or have an opportunity to really feel some of these old papers and many of them um, are back from the 1800 early 1900s so they're kind of they're kind of cool um what else have we got? Oh, I've got an Amazon shop and um, I put my favorite tools and supplies in there and I've also added a book section and the book section contains books that a junk journalers love to use. Um, and uh, whenever I use a book now, I'm going to try and uh, put it in there so I can um, show you the picture of the cover because often I'll remove the covers due to a space concern over here and I'll lose the, the publisher, the title and what the book cover looked like. So now I'm going to make a point of uh, when I use a new book that I haven't added Added to the um, book section yet I will add it in there so if you're looking for it it's a great place to start when you're looking for books um, but you can also get used books at many online book um, retailers sale, sales um, places as well as your local thrift stores or garage sales things like that so um, it's just a nice place to resource material um, what else um, I have a Facebook group. If you haven't joined that, come on over and have some papery fun with us. We're getting inspired by each other. Um, we do uh, weekly and monthly challenges. They are not obligatory. You can come and join the group and just have fun and just show us what you're making um, from the, these videos. Um, or um, uh, you, you're welcome just to lurk, hang out, just get ideas. Or you're welcome to put comments and things like that as long as they're all related to uh, uh, these things that we talked about. So there you go. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I have the Etsy shop, told you about that. All my links are in the description box below, and if you're on your phone, if you touch the title of the video, it should open up the description box links below. So if you're looking for things like that, there you go. And I also have a merchandise shop where if you're interested in getting paper outpost um, mugs and t-shirts and sweatshirts and, and um, uh, totes and fun things like that, it's a fun place to buy some items if you have somebody who's just uh, some loving uh, life doing things with uh, reckless abandon. There you go. And uh, remember that fun can be simple. Create with reckless abandon. And uh, this Saturday is the third installment of uh, our third episode of the Crazy Crafter, uh, the Crazy Craft Challenge. And uh, you are welcome to join us. We would love to have you join us along the road uh, making these crazy things. Me and Louisa Heinzel are doing that together and it's been a very, very fun collaboration. Um, if you want to post a video showing what you made or what you did or how it turned out and there's no pressure, this is all for fun. We're just enjoying the process of crafting together. It's a nice way to come together as a community. Just put um, hashtag the crafty, sorry, hashtag the craft sorry, <laughs> hashtag the crazy craft challenge, thank you, uh, in your title uh, or in your description, and that way we can find you and see what you're doing. So I'm hoping you're all having fun out there, and we will talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.